I'm a big believer that you can live the nomadic capitalist lifestyle, whether that's living in one place or being nomadic, whether you're single, whether you're married, even whether you have a family, and I know a lot of people who do that. But I recently posed a question on social media. Is the nomad capitalist lifestyle a single person's game? And today I'm gonna to share with you the answers and my thoughts on why this is something that anyone can do. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson, the author of this best-selling book available on Amazon and the founder of Nomad Capitalist, where we help seven and eight-figure entrepreneurs and investors legally go where you're treated best. More at nomadcapitalist.com. And so our team recently posted on social media asking, uh, is the nomad capitalist lifestyle for singles? Now, uh, for me, there's many different ways to live as a nomad. Uh, people often get confused and Sometimes I'll meet people and they'll say, oh, so, you know, are you living here? You know, is this your home? And I'll say, well, you know, the nomad really does me nomad. I'm, I'm a pretty, pretty direct person. Uh, I have multiple homes. Now, what I've been doing over the years is becoming less nomadic in the sense of dragging a suitcase behind me, staying in hotels, staying in vacation rentals, and now, you know, stay in places that, that I control. Um, but I still am constantly in the move. Uh, I started as a single person, now I'm a married person anticipate continuing the lifestyle uh, with a family and no families who do this. But I think that what is often overlooked on the other side is that you don't have to be moving between your network of homes. You don't have to be dragging a suitcase. You can simply say, I'm gonna be a nomad capitalist and live in Dubai and have a second passport somewhere else and enjoy the zero tax policies and have my finances somewhere else and just have a general uh, diversified lifestyle. There's no one right away to do this. And I think what's, again, often overlooked is even a family can move from one country to another. It's not like you are uh, constantly on the go and have all the hassles of that and when you move from your high-tax country to a zero-tax country. But let's get into the comments because I think there's some interesting things from you, the audience, on this. Let's start with Kel. Uh, this is talking about, is it a single person's game being a nomad capitalist? Kel says, I think assuming it's a single man's game is just an excuse to say, yay, I can stay in my comfort zone now and I'm going to bl blame the family. This is something I've thought about for a long time. I remember uh, being a young guy living in the United States and uh, business was my big thing. And so most of my friends were involved in business in some way. I was working with them in business. I would hang out with them. And so I would be you know, 24 and they were 34 or 38 or whatever. And some of them, many of them were married. Some of them had kids. And uh, it seems like there were a number of times I realized when uh, I was aced out of a dinner or something got canceled at the last minute and it was, the, you know, the kid got sick. And I started to think maybe these people are having uh, kids because they want to use the kid as an excuse when they don't want to go out somewhere. And Kel makes an interesting point, you know, assuming this is a single person's game. Uh, saying, oh, I can't be a nomad capitalist. It's almost like saying the minute you get married, ah, oh, you know, I really want to, but we really want to come, but, you know, Buster is sick tonight. We, we can't do it. And, and I think that's very interesting. You know, I'm the guy who's known uh, in my business and, and to some of you for being the don't make excuses guy. Uh, but he makes an interesting point. I mean, what is so difficult about if you really wanted to do it? Now, you may not want to do it, and that's fine, and I respect that. But to say, ah, oh, you know, I got married, uh, dang, nab it, you know, <laughs> I don't really know that that works. Uh, another commenter who was anonymous says, uh, no, military dads have been doing it for centuries. This is also interesting because, um, uh, you know, somehow some of the people who say, oh, you can't do that, some of the people I've seen in the circles over the years, uh, one person I, I, I met at a party, I, I try not to meet <laughs> bureaucrats, but one of the guys uh, was a diplomat. And he's like, well, how do you plan to continue your lifestyle? And I thought to myself, the same way you do. You know, these diplomats, these people who work in bureaucracy, the Foreign Service, they move around. I believe in the U.S. they rotate people uh, to various embassies every three or four years. Right? So you're moving around. Um, you know, Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank says he lived in a whole bunch of countries as a kid because his mother got remarried to a guy who worked for uh, I forget if it was the UN or, or some organization like that. And every year or two, he was moving around. Is anybody asking the UN, how does your family deal with it? Because there's this idea that, oh, but that's different. That's the UN. It's very esteemed. You know, it, it's diplomat. It's, it's military. I mean, how many military brats lived in, you know, eight different places as kids? And people aren't pushing back against that. Now, maybe it's not ideal, but there seems to be some kind of higher calling. What I would argue is, you know, creating as much value, retaining as much wealth, 
uh, creating as many experiences and diversification as possible means a better life and better opportunities for your children, uh, more so than being a diplomat, which doesn't really pass down to uh, the next generation other than maybe some contacts. Uh, Reiner says, nah, nah, if you're a nomad capitalist, you're intelligent. That's right. Nomad capitalist means you command a good amount of economic mass. Just canon it around with you. It also means you have the requisite social skills to create and maintain relationships. So uh, it's a good point. Right? If you like having relationships, you'll find relationships. If you don't want to have relationships, maybe living the nomad capitalist lifestyle is the kick that you need to get away from bad relationships. I mean, how many people live where they're from or live wherever they've been living you know, as an adult and uh, they just have friendships because that's the default? I mean, we've talked about before how when I moved overseas, I, I, I always had a car in the United States. You wouldn't dare not have a car in almost anywhere in the U.S. You'd be a loser. I remember walking around at you know, midnight some nights just clearing my head after a long day of uh, business. And people would literally roll down the window and shout at me, you're a loser, where's your car? <laughs> I have a car, I'm taking a walk. But you know, when I moved overseas, suddenly it's like, I don't care if this guy who lives in peddling Jaya, Malaysia, driving his Mercedes thinks I'm a bum because I live in the city center and I can walk everywhere or I can Uber everywhere. And maybe the same thing applies to uh, having friends. Maybe you can get out of the dead end friendships that uh, people I, I saw on social media recently, the, uh, the watering of dead plants. How many, how many people, if you stopped texting them or stopped calling them, would never call you ever again? Uh, so if you have the ability to make friendships and you want to, Reiner says you can do it overseas. Jose says a nomad needs a partner. Now we're getting to the partners. A nomad needs a partner who doesn't want a 9 to 5 career, doesn't watch the boob tube, is past politics and social issues, and shares the philosophy of living as free as they are born. So um, if you're going to do this, you either want to have a partner who's on the same page, and that is one of the biggest issues, is someone who's married to someone, has a girlfriend, what have you. Who, uh, who does not share their vision, that's a deal killer. Uh, it really holds a lot of people back. And I've talked to guys uh, who are literally crying um, because they're so uh, frustrated that they want to keep their relationship, but she's not going to move. Or she'll only move to, to Spain or something. And uh, you know, nothing wrong with Spain, um, but uh, Jose nails it. You need to find someone. You either need to get on the same page with your partner or you need to go out into the world on your own and find that partner. Ben adds, to me, a nomad is all about the partner you're with. There are only so many places my girlfriend is willing to try, but enough to make the switch to a nomad lifestyle, and that's fine. Uh, you know, I think people see me sometimes in Cambodia or you know, you know, Kazakhstan or, or wherever. Uh, that's not what it has to be about. I think those places are interesting. I think there's lots of opportunities. Listen, I, I, will, I will report back to you, especially if I'm working with you, uh, on what's happening in Kazakhstan worth doing. You don't have to go there if you don't want to. And so, uh, Ben, you can tell your girlfriend uh, she doesn't have to go to Kazakhstan or Laos or uh, any of those places. Mish says, being a nomadic duo for three, been a nomadic duo for three years, married for 12 years and counting. Uh, that's great. Yeah, plenty of people. I, I think people just assume, by the way, and I've seen couples where it's like, uh, people I know, um, oh, you know, my husband doesn't want to do it. He's not adventurous. And the husband says, you know, my wife doesn't want to do it. She's, uh, she's a stick in the mud. And they just can't get on the same page, but actually they want to do it. So that's what Misha's doing. Uh, Josh adds, it's like eating at a restaurant alone versus eating at a restaurant with your best friend or partner. It's more memorable and meaningful when you share your life experience together with someone, which is an interesting way to look at it. Um, as someone who, uh, both in the U.S., enjoyed a certain amount of solitude and now, you know, and then lived a nomadic lifestyle where I would sometimes be in a place for a week or two and, and just, you know, didn't always have uh, someone to go out with, uh, I got used to and became very comfortable with eating alone. Uh, but sure, yeah, if you have someone that you care about to go out with, that's much better. And I think that could apply to the, uh, the nomad lifestyle as well. Eric says, it's simple to live nomadic lifestyle with a woman. She just needs to be naturally in this frame. So there you go. Uh, now, talking about families. Uh, an anonymous commenter said, nope, not, uh, not only for singles. We do it with a family of six. So now we're really getting into cutting down the excuses. Don says, I know plenty of families that embrace the nomad life. What's better than homeschooling with real world experiences? Dot, 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 nothing. Uh, yeah, people say, oh, where do your kids go to school? Um, now, again, you can move to Dubai, you can move to Monaco, you can move to anywhere. I mean, there's internet. I remember um, 
my first big trip through Southeast Asia, one of the things that I met, even though I was single and, and happily single and uh, I had no plans in the near future to have kids, was I wanted to be able to tell people, um, you know, what schools were like. And I mean, by the time I got down to Laos and I believe Myanmar, it was a little, uh, it was a little rusty. But you know, Vietnam, um, even Cambodia, you had some pretty decent international schools if that's where you want to send your kids. Now, they're not going to be cheap, but if you're a seven or eight figure entrepreneur, you can certainly afford it. And the tax savings moving out of your high tax country will more than pay for that. I mean, I had a, had a uh, banker friend who sent his three kids to school in New York and we figured out uh, private school. He had to earn like $400,000 pre-tax to send these kids to school. It'd be a lot better deal than that in uh, you know, Vietnam, for example, or Malaysia. Uh, they had public schools in some of these countries that you could go to. Um, you know, you could homeschool. But you know, yeah, Don says you can homeschool. What's better than that? They're learning something. They're getting real world experience. And whenever I call up one of my friends who has kids, I say, come over to wherever I'm at. I said, you know, bring your son. He'll learn a lot more here. And uh, I think that's true. Uh, another commenter says, in fact, as a kid, learn to be flexible, adaptable, and global in your outlook is a brilliant thing. Yeah, not enough people have that. And the world is becoming global. So definitely something valuable to give your kids the uh, experience uh, because as we talk about, more and more countries are being competitive. If you can pick up a second passport along your travels, if you can uh, you know, teach your kids something, that is going to give them more opportunities uh, because where you are from is probably not going to be the be-all end-all by the time that they are in the, uh, the job market, the business market, what have you. Mike adds, my wife, my five-year-old son, and I just moved from the U.S. to Albania and now finally in Tbilisi and we've done great. I'd say it's actually better with the family. Very interesting. I would have probably gotten scared or lonely a long time ago. Interesting way of looking at it, that uh, you, know, you do it on your own. I don't think it's scary at all. I mean, there's a few places maybe you want to be careful, but uh, definitely interesting. Yeah, you know, listen, uh, some guys do this. They, people think it's a single man's game. They think you're out every night drinking. You're, you're, you're carousing, as it were, for, uh, for women, or you're a woman and you're trying to find a, you know, whatever. Uh, hey, not everybody wants that. Some people like doing it together, sharing the experience. Catherine chimes in. She says, absolutely not. I've taken my three children everywhere with me, and they are global citizens and very open-minded to better human beings. Uh, they're very open-minded. They are better human beings for, for the uh, experiences. Uh, so there you go from Catherine. Now, uh, counter views. You live the nomad lifestyle married. Lord knows I have. Kids are what make it difficult. So we'll see, but you can see lots of people chiming in on that. Another counter, if you have a family, it's five times more complicated and five times more expensive. Uh, and listen, I, uh, I have three adopted siblings. I was uh, on my own for almost the first 10 years of my life. And I remember thinking, uh, when the second two came, uh, I was a teenager. And they were all older kids that were adopted. And I remember thinking, like, it's going to become pretty expensive to do a lot of things. And we weren't uh, living the nomad lifestyle. I mean, everything becomes more expensive. And so if expense is an issue, then I guess, uh, you know, don't have six kids. You know, Joshua Sheets, who's on our channel, uh, he does have four kids. And so he's a family of six. And he travels around. And, uh, you know, there are ways to do it. Now, again, you know, being seven or eight-figure income earner, having a good net worth, uh, that all makes it, of course, easier. But everything's more expensive if you have uh, more kids. I mean, I don't know that that's different. In fact, I would argue, again, living in New York, living in a Western country, living in wherever, is going to cost a lot more than when you're living in, again, the Vietnams or the Georgias, the Albanias, what have you. Dale says, thankfully, it isn't a game we need to compete in. We can all be nomads if we're willing to put the effort in. Uh, and uh, lastly, someone anonymous uh, says, Andrew, no, I don't agree. I think you have a problem with lumping people together to fit your business model. Case in point. But this is the guy they tell me uh, complains how we, uh, we ban him. Uh, case in point, your latest video, which type are you? And so now we're getting off track. Was very vague and never clearly described what these two types that you think everyone fits into. So the, the point of the video was, are you someone who is clutching to your home country and is basically uh, you know, attached to the political system and doesn't want to fully get out of it? Or are you just open-minded to totally going where you're treated best and letting go? Um, there are many different types. And yes, there are many different types. Uh, and so I think that's the point of the uh, of this whole experience is that you know uh, as this lifestyle expands, you're going to see some of these stereotypes fall apart. Uh, there's a lot of talk in the media about so-called digital nomads. They're generally talking about people who are living 
um, more of the, the total nomadic lifestyle. They're doing the new digital nomad visas. They're, they're living without owning homes. They're living in Airbnbs. They're renting places. They're doing it on the cheap, um, but even increasingly not on the cheap. I, I think that that kind of stereotype uh, exists to where people think, well, okay, you're, right. you're not going to do that with a family. There are so many ways to live this lifestyle. My point of which type are you is simply, uh, are you someone who's ready to commit to this? Because as some of the commenters said, there are no excuses. So uh, I want to hear what you have to say. Leave a comment below. Is this a single person's game? Can you be married? Can you have a family uh, and be a nomad? If you've lived that, leave a comment below. If you're thinking about it, what are your ideas for doing that? I want to hear from you. Don't stop now. We've got well over a thousand more videos here on YouTube for you to watch and learn how to go where you're treated best. And if you want to work with Nomad Capitalist personally, go to nomadcapitalist.com apply. Learn about our unique tried and true process. Garnered over years of experience and learn how you can become our client.